Good evening, everybody. We're live in the pits of Motorcast. This is Dave, and I've got on me on the line with me, Mark Pappas. Mark, how's it going? Pretty good. How about you, Dave? Pretty good. Now, Mark, are, are you the one that runs uh, Midwest Nostalgia Pro Stocks? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, by uh, I guess by uh, you know everyone wants to run it, take two steps forward, and everyone took two steps backward and left me standing there. So by default, uh, so to speak, I run it. No, I'll tell you side. Yeah, I, uh, along with Ted Peters, Mike Ruth, um, I am uh, responsible for the Midwest Nostalgia Pro Stock Association, the original one. Yeah, not to be cu- confused with another one out there. Well, uh, what are you gonna do? So, Mark, when 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 did you get this group going? Well, about uh, you know, it actually came up today. This is our seventh season. Started uh, um, six seasons. Started uh, actually. I started building the car in 2010. We actually started racing in 2011. In the beginning, it was kind of uh, lean. Um, what happened was, uh, good guys had a uh, racing organization and a uh, nostalgic pro stock class. And unfortunately, they pulled the plug after three races. Um, so the following year, I came out and with uh, I had a grumpy car in my rear Morrison car that I currently drive and um, did a little match racing and then uh, Bill Mary joined the fray uh, a little bit and um, from that point on we uh, you know got a few other people involved uh, somebody's with me they're in good guys a uh, local guy from Wisconsin and uh, you know Ted Peters came aboard George Kubis on and on and on we kind of built it to where it was today yeah, I think it's really neat. it's really neat that you're doing the tribute to the legends. Um, it is, it is, and uh, you know, people uh, can relate to it. And um, you know, uh, quite frankly, the legends that are still with us uh, enjoy it, um, and uh, as do their families and their uh, you know their crew members that are you know uh, who were there back in the day. No, no. Now, Mark, um, so you drive two cars, right? I have two cars currently in the, in the, uh, in the, in the fray. Yeah, the Grumpy, Grumpy Toy and, uh, Rare Morrison. The Rare Morrison 81 Camaro that I drive and is active, uh, uh, probably one of the most, uh, recognized cars out there. And also, uh, I have the 81 Joe Lapone Match Race 80, uh, Chevrolet Camaro. That um, uh, you know, in the past, Mike Ruth has driven it. Uh, Chuck Weck. Uh, this year, uh, we're it, it's uh, kind of been on the sidelines, but uh, it'll come out in full force for the Route 66 Classic in August. And uh, Kevin Lawrence, noted NMCA and uh, NHRA Pro Stock driver, will be behind the wheel. <laughs> so we look uh, look forward to seeing that car come back out. Speaking of Chuck Weck, he's, he's, on, he's on fire with the Wise Guys right now. Yeah, he was, uh, the Wise Guys were booked into an event we were at, Door Waters in Cordova, and um, I uh, was fortunate enough to be in the final round there with Chuck, and uh, I got to witness his, uh, his round, and uh, um, yeah, Chuck was running pretty good. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck. I believe he went six sixty six or uh, somewhere around there in the final. I uh, actually in the final, they ran the eighth mile. Um, but his previous run before that, I think, was uh, six sixty six. Yeah, I believe he beat uh, Alex Kusha in the finals. Yes, I believe. Uh, yeah, he might have. You know, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure on that. It was either Kusha or Redfield. But I think I think it was Kusha that with the uh, Plymouth Duster. Uh, you know, I thought it was Bob, I thought it was Bob Red, Redfield. Uh, I'm not positive though. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. So, so how, how how did the how did the event go for you over there at Cordova? The event at Cordova went very well. Um, I ran uh, my personal best DT in the car, and uh, um, all the uh, Ted Peters ran his personal best, and uh, very good. Uh, a very good outing uh, for our cars, other than uh, Mike Ropo had an unfortunate uh, incident. Uh, fortunately, he caught it. He broke his wheelie bars on a launch, 
and uh, other than that, everybody made uh, really nice, crisp full runs. I believe Mike Ruth, uh, to date, ran his fastest ET in the Bob Ridden car. So Dominic Blasco had the uh, track working very well, and, uh, you know, we were all able to get our cars uh, into some uncharted territory. Now, your your next event is the 12th at uh, Byron, the Summer Thunder? Yes, our next event is uh, a week from Saturday at Byron, Summer Thunder. Looking, uh, always look forward to a uh, home, home race, so to speak. Um, and the week after that is the Route 66 Classic. So uh, kind of uh, uh, two home tracks, our, our two main home tracks, uh, back-to-back, so that's kind of nice. So now, so now, Mark. When when did you get started in drag racing? Um, you know, I um, you know, as a kid, you know, I I, uh, I didn't really have a uh, mechanical or automotive background, but uh, believe it or not, uh, I got hooked on uh, a couple things. One is my at the time my sister was dating uh, a boy, her boyfriend who had a. Uh, Hot Rod 69 AMX, and I thought that was the coolest thing. And, you know, he took me to a couple of drag races and uh, Lake Geneva and Union Grove and Byron and kind of got it. And then as I got a little older, uh, out of high school, my senior year in high school, I had a 57 Chevy, and, uh, you know, we uh, tried to take that down the track and with, you know, typical young kid results. And uh, a few years later, I kind of got into it on and off, on and off. I was always into it. Um, took a little absence for a few years, came back, and I had a 55 Chevy. And I said, it'd be kind of cool to take it down the drag strip and rented a U-Haul trailer and went up the, the track and made a pass and kind of evolved like, okay, next year I'll make, you know, a couple, make, I'll make a couple of trips down the drag strip. And then the Dominic Blasco had a, uh, was starting the Midwest Gassers at the time. And I had a 55 Chevy and a 57 Corvette that kind of fit in his rules and started racing on more of a, you know, uh, purpose, you know, not just go up there and run time only, you know, run with the group. And um, I'm kind of involved in this pro stock thing now, and I could never have envisioned this this, uh, pro stock thing having grown to where it is right now. I mean, not only on the track, I mean, I've been blessed to be at some of the, you know, coolest racetracks from, uh, like, a giant facility, like, you know, an NHRA facility, like we've been to Indy numerous times, Norwalk, Maple Grove, um, yeah, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but also been to some really quaint little drag strips like Paducah, Kentucky, and, um, you know, uh, we've been to Bunker Hill, Muncie, uh, uh, Marion County, Ohio, uh, you know, Cordova, Memphis International, uh, Sykeston. I mean, on and on. And I've really been blessed to get to, uh, to not only see these racetracks, but I have to say, I have to really thank, by and large, the majority of the places we travel to, the uh, owners slash uh, managers, promoters, are just really... Um, very, uh, we're received with open arms and they're very accommodating, very appreciative, um, you know, uh, of us coming out and, uh, you know, we're really treated well and uh, quite frankly, something that we weren't always used to uh, up in our own, at, at, uh, you know, in some of our own area up there. So it's been a real, uh, a real blessing, I got to say, and I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm uh, very fortunate to, uh, you know, be involved in it, and I've got to meet great people. I mean, I, I knew Mike Ruth, but not to the degree I know him now. And you know, everyone, Ted Peters is a Division Three Tech guy, so you know he's been in my driveway teching my cars over the years, but never envisioned him being one of my closest friends. And, and uh, George Kubis, um, Scott Hoffman, Steve Stenick, uh, Mike Ropo, you know, on and on and on. Uh, John Denbrook from Detroit. Um, you know, I just. You know, it's like a brotherhood, and it's, you know, I feel that it, these will be my friends long after, you know, we're done drag racing. So I, I really feel blessed, I have to say. I really feel blessed. Yeah, I think no- nowadays a lot of the treks and the fans are looking for the long, smoky burnouts and the dry hops. Yeah, that's, uh, 
that's the uh, the the. Uh, the uh, I, I can tell you a quick story. We were in. Uh, um, we had the pleasure of racing for Steve Gibbs at the Hot Rod Reunion for five years in a row, and um, I don't know, maybe three, two, three years ago, one particular race. I was doing a very long burnout, and um, I at the end of the burnout, I hit. Uh, we have a headset on the car where I could communicate at the time Mike Ruth was my crew chief and uh, you know I hit the button to actually ask him something um, I believe he opened the door because it was kind of smoky in there and he had hit the button at the same time and I could hear the fan reaction I was like you know what's that and uh, he came back and said what's what and I said well, you know, something happened he, he was that's you you know that was the fan reaction and uh, you know and uh you know, it's all in good nature. Uh, Ted Peters and I have had uh, a couple of, uh, you know, pretty infamous staging duels where none of us wanted to go in first. And I'm not quite sure how that started. And now that it's more of a, you know, we can go three or four tracks and not even think about it. And, you know, this week in Cordova, you know, um, I was running him in what, what was our final round. And, uh, you know, we always wish each other good luck. And Teddy had that kind of cackle on his face. And, uh, I, I said, okay, I got an idea what he wants to do here. And, uh, you know, and he probably, uh, looked at me and thought the same thing. And, uh, I think we held it out there about two and a half minutes. And, uh, you know, once it gets to about 175 plus, uh, somebody, somebody has to show some common sense and go in first. But, uh, Great uh, crowd reaction. I, I think it brings back the old days. The long burnouts the, is a riot. The, um, the chirpies, the big giant dry hops. Um, I got to tell you, I catch my size racing Mike Rope for the last two races. He does a dry hop that, you know, I always, man, when I'm back up after my burnout, I try to put myself in a position where I can watch it. Because it's, you know, I, I'm at that point for that, you know, three or four seconds I become a fan I just want to watch him do that you know it's uh, you know it's pretty uh, I have the best scene in the house sometimes to watch that and, uh, yeah great fan fan uh, recognition and um, great fan uh, um, appreciation so it's uh, all, all good it's all good yeah I miss seeing like long smoky burnouts and dry house with the uh, nitro funny cars well you know it's funny with the you know, I, I can't speak for the NHI Nitro Funny Cars, but I, I think a lot of it has to do with clutch to technology and the heating. And, um, you know, I've had uh, numerous talks, uh, you know, I, again, uh, not the name drop or anything, but, uh, you know, one of the things this nostalgic pro stock deal has brought me opportunities to meet not only past legends, but current legends. And I've been fortunate enough to call, uh, you know, Jason Lyon, a, a good friend of mine now. I've got to know over the last few years and we were discussing when they were up at Joliet at the uh, Nationals and um, he was saying you know the way pro stocks are right now um, where each team gets the ignition box from an HRA or mandated and the, the same fuel injection as the other team where they really can't afford to do uh, you know a, a long burnout or a staging duel because the cars are so close right now and there's really nothing they can do to separate themselves per se that you know everything's uh, down with science and they know they have to stage that car at 140 degrees and if they go in 142 they're going to lose two one hundreds. and you know an NHRA pro stock at the top of the pack two one hundreds is you know it is a lifetime so um, you know I think that's uh, you know I guess with with um, with pro progress you know you, I guess you lose some things, but some of that is those. I, I remember vividly as a kid, you know, it sounded like an air gun. <laughs> you know, as the funny cars or even the pro stockers, especially the funny cars, used to do those dry hops to seat the clutch. And now they do, you know, you know, I believe I heard John Force interviewed somewhere where he said he could never do a burnout like that again because, you know, just basically melt the equipment. So uh, one of the things we can do is we, we do that. You know, we uh, not only, uh, you know, are allowed long burnouts, we're encouraged to do long burnouts. And, uh, you know, by and large, uh, I think we give the fans their money's worth. You know, especially that the majority of our cars, uh, you know, which kind of separates us from 
uh, you know, group. But the majority of the cars, our cars, are clutch cars. Okay, and it's not taken away from anybody, you know, bracket racer or anything like that. But it's a little easier to do a long burnout and not worry about, you know, you know, air gap and and uh, you know, base pressure and too much static weight. If you're doing a long burnout in a Turbo 400 or a Power Glide versus a you know manual manually shifted Lenko, you know, with either single, double, or triple disc clutch. Um, but uh, you know that's that's what we do. You know, we we recreate what the pro stock cars did. You you won't find us just with paint job. You'll find us with you know period correct motors, um, uh, dominant you know dual dominators, and I think last week we had seven cars and six of them had Lenkos. You know, at our last at our last race. So um, you know that's. That's what we're, you know, trying to, you know, really authenticate, you know, the whole deal and make it a driver's class. You know, it's a little different. Uh, you know, uh, I often tell people the hardest thing in mastering a clutch car actually is the burnout. You know, that you don't get, to, you don't ruin the clutch before you get a chance to race. So, uh, and I think if fans appreciate that because I remember as a kid being at the drag strip and, you know, even if I just went on a test and tune, I just to watch cars. And you'd walk through the pits and you'd say, hey, that car over there, that Camaro's got a big block and a four speed. And you knew when you, when you was, when he was at the starting line, you wanted to be close because you wanted to hear that, you know, you know, mat that thing and just let the clutch out. You know, and, I, and uh, from a driver's perspective, I gotta tell you, nothing cooler than putting that thing on a two step and letting the clutch out, especially when it goes straight. When it makes a left or right hand turn, maybe not so much, but, uh, it's uh, when it, when the clutch is right. It's a really uh, you know you kind of hold on and and uh, you know it's going to be one heck of a ride as long as you get those shift points. Yeah, when I when I was a kid, kid growing up, my dad started taking me to Union Grove and uh, US Thirty Drag Ship in Indiana. It was all the funny cars and pro stocks doing all the long burnouts. Yeah, I, I remember those days. Yeah, it sticks with you. Well, you can, you know, fortunately, you can still see him. Come out and watch us. Yeah. So, so when, so when you were growing up, did you have any uh, pro stock drivers that inspired you? You know, I did, um, and I got to say, I feel like uh, again, and not am I lucky to be surrounded with the people and the opportunity to go to some of the race tracks I've gone to. I am at the ultimate. Um, great fortune of representing the two people I idled as a Chevy lover as a kid. You know, I represent Rear Morrison Shepard, a three-time world championship car that probably would have won, you know, for, uh, you know, probably uh, at least a, uh, in the immediate future, probably would have kept winning championships, if not for the, uh, you know, very unfortunate unfortunate tragedy that took the life of Lee Shepard and uh, I also uh, get to represent Bill Jenkins and uh, and you know his estate and the guys that uh, you know still work with him at the end and uh, I have to say that not only do I get to represent him um, you know I'm on a you know first team basis with uh, with with David Rear and, and all the fellows at Rear Morrison, they can't be more helpful to me. You know, I had a little snafu this year uh, with the motor. Uh, we had a little miscalculation, and um, you know, got David on the phone. He suggests what we try, uh, take some measurements, and uh, you know, he knew the appropriate steps to take. And uh, you know, from Arlington, Texas, to Park Ridge, Illinois, uh, less than less than 24 hours I had this stuff on my doorstep and uh, yeah I talked to David today about uh, uh, a tunnel ramp change we made and and, uh, and the really cool thing is um, I got to uh, really get to know uh, a side of Bill Jenkins that um, as his handlers once told me that you know I don't know what you did but you're in the inner circle Mark and, and I, I was blessed to get to know uh, you know, Bill Jenkins, the person, not the myth. And uh, Bill helped me tremendously with, uh, you know, a couple of projects I did, uh, the tribute cards to him. And if it was for, I, I uh, not to brag, but I, I own the real number 10 Bill Jenkins Vega. 
uh, arguably the most complete Grumpy's toy of the four remaining on the planet. And Bill helped me with that car right up till he passed away. And, you know, for a kid growing up, idolizing Bill Jenkins, Joe Lapone, and Rear Moore, Buddy Morrison, David Rear, and Lee Shepard. And now I represent them. I mean, it's, uh, I'm in my 50s now, and sometimes I sit in that car and I feel like I'm, you know, a 16-year-old kid. It's like every day's Christmas when I get to get in those cars. So, so now with the rear Morrison car, what's the fastest uh, run time you've had with that? The rear Morrison car, the fastest we've gone right now is last Saturday. We went 783. There was a run the previous week that was undocumented, and I'm not going to say what that was. And, uh, nor do I believe it was, but looking at the computer tapes, um, the last three times the car has been down the drag strip, uh, it, uh, well, two verified and one, you know, like I say, we had a snafu with the timing equipment. Uh, the fact the car has been uh, documented is 783, and that was last Saturday, and uh, it's a uh, fast mile per hour, I believe, was Bowling Green a few years ago, ran 176. <laughs> Always seems to run faster at Bowling Green, and uh, you know sometimes you wonder if the timing, you know, the way your fender hits the timing equipment might add per mile, mile per hour. But uh, uh, the last two years we're in Bowling Green, always seem to pick up uh, a mile, uh, about a mile and a half on the mile per hour. So the fastest run is seven eighty three at one hundred seventy four miles an hour right now. So, so how many crew members do you have for, you, for the rear Morrison? Um, you know, uh, I'm a little, you know, uh, Mike Ruth was my last crew chief, and uh, I've been blessed, you know. From the beginning, I had Bob Cole, um, who actually is one of my best friends in the world, but, uh, you know, he's into the gassers now with his family and, and can't quite make the, make the races with us, but uh, he was my original, I guess you would say, crew chief. And then, uh, you know, I had uh, a fellow named Mike Zucker, and I had a fellow named, you know, uh, the famous Mike Ruth, who's now driving the Glidden car. So uh, I've always been blessed to have really, really, really good uh, guys out in front of me. Right now, I'm kind of between crew chiefs. Uh, I have uh, George Manis helping me out, and uh, I, I would say the guy that makes the calls on a car or really helps me dial the car in is Adam Dreigich, and I know I mispronounce his name. I do it every time. Sorry, Adam. But uh, Adam worked with Juan Johnson for uh, a, n a number of years, and uh, he's kind of a free land. Well, he's a, a, a crew chief of Dan Stevenson Pro Mod car, and uh, his father-in-law is Kevin Lawrence, and he does a lot of uh, top sportsman stuff. Kind of a freelance, you know, drag strip guru. Adam, uh, you know, comes by the shop whenever we need be, and uh, you know, we have a if, if we have a problem, we can't quite put a handle on Adam. Well, the, the Adam is actually responsible for our uh, everything from our gear ratios in Elenco right now, with uh, you know, discussing with David Rear to. Uh, you know, the, the hat height, the base, and the static weight in our clutch. So I don't have a current crew chief at the drag strip. I have Adam on the speed dial. And, um, you know, the good thing about the, our group is, you know, we're competitive. Everybody wants to win but uh, or run, beat the guy next to him. But, you know, when you're getting buckled up, if you're short guys or something, somebody, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, you know, somebody's. Everybody always makes sure that you're that you have everything you need. You're in the car safely, and and uh, you know you're backing up straight. So, um, um, as far as current crew chiefs, uh, I'm looking, and uh, over the winter, uh, hopefully, uh, somebody will want to get into it. Uh, you need a, you need a dedicated guy, and and uh, someone you're on the same page with, somebody to communicate with, and and. Um, you know, someone likes to likes to beat her because it's uh, when you're at the track, it's a long day to make a couple of short runs, but it's uh, it's a fun day, and uh, so we'll uh, you know anybody out there has an inkling to be a pro stock crew uh, chief, you know where to find me. Now, do you have any sp sponsors for the rare Morrison car? Oh, uh, we sir, you know we've been another we've been blessed. Um, I'm glad you asked because I want I wanted to get them in. 
Uh, on a personal note, I want to thank Power Master. Uh, John can be uh, John and Dave couldn't be better to me. I mean, uh, you know, I had a, a question on a starter, and I wanted to take it out of the car and, and bring it to John, and he said, "Leave it in the car. I'll be right there." And I, I was, whoa, whoa! Now this is the owner of the company, the CEO and president. Took the starter out, brought it to his tech guy. They did, you know, decided we'd do something else. And two days later, not only did he have a starter, he had a backup starter. Um, as I often say, you can't uh, race, you can't win, you can't get down the track if your car doesn't start. And Power Master's been great to us. Um, uh, JC at Strange has been great to us, gives us, make sure that, you know, we, uh, we get some, uh, very competitive pricing and, uh, our, most of our cars, all my cars are all totally equipped with Strange from the axles to the housings to the brakes. Um, you know, height uh, has been very good to us. Uh, Elston chassis um, has given me uh, windows, and, and um, you know, I, I'm sure. Oh, I, I, I would be remiss. Uh, Autolite, uh, Autolite Ram uh, has make sure we have plenty of spark plugs so we can index them, and oil filters. And uh, David Ward from Performance Lube has uh, is, is made sure that I have enough oil at the track all the time in case we have to do something quick and drain the oil and make sure that I have all the oils and lubricants in my shop. So, I, you know, ARP, Robert uh, from California, make sure that we not only have strong bolts, we have shiny bolts. So uh, there's been a lot of people um, that really have uh, got on board with the, uh, the Stavik Pro Stock Association. Uh, personal, I want to thank Greer Morrison for what they do for me. Um, the late Nick Bonifani Sr., who never, never, he was on his boat, he would take his, if I had a clutch problem on a Sunday afternoon in, in the Duke of Kentucky, he would answer his phone. And uh, the people that carry on, his son and Rick at the shop, they're just as nice to me now as, as Nick was. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, we're, we're sm maybe we're, you know, big fish in a small pond or, you know, small fish in a big pond, however you want to say it, but there are a lot of companies and a lot of people, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, and I apologize, but uh, there's a lot of people that, that really uh, support our program. Yeah, I, 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 another one comes to mind is Flat Out Gaskets. Um, Mark, Mark always makes sure, you know, we need something in a hurry, swing by, it'll be, you know, or if, if, if it's after hours, I'll meet you somewhere, you need a special gasket, it's done. Um, very supportive of our group. So I'd like to thank Strange, Flat Out, uh, Power Master, uh, ARP, Fram, uh, Coding Specialties, Billet Specialties, you know, uh, on so and so on. Howard from Oroso, who comes out every year, make sure we have spark plug wires we need and, and you know, what, whatever else we need. So, um, yeah, we've been very fortunate. I've been very fortunate to, uh, you know, get to work with some great companies and some great companies are on board helping us out. And, uh, you know, they're excited about us being out there and, and uh, you know, definitely help from a financial point uh, to keep these cars running. So I thank you for asking that because uh, I would have been, hopefully not been remiss in uh, thanking those people. No, no, no problem, Mark. Now with, now with the group... Are there any legendary cars out there that aren't in your, in your group that you would like to see someone bring into the group? Um, you know, uh, yeah, there, there's, uh, you know, like we went to, uh, we went to North Carolina this year and it was a Frank Iaconio car, there was a, uh, a Hippo Haas car. Um, you know, the cool thing about this is, you know, yeah, it's cool to see the Rim Morrison car and Grumpy Jenkins car. Um, you know, there's some local people, uh, Fat Mary, a Chicago name, and um, there's some rumors that a Joe Sat Mary car will be coming out from a local standpoint. And as a kid, I remember the Tough Rabbit and the Beautiful Rabbit cars. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, great, you know, uh, Jed Coughlin Sr. had a really cool Pinto that actually it's on the cover page in the Stars of Pro Stock Association Facebook page today. There's, um, yeah, there's a lot of cars that, uh, I, I, I think that, uh, while we maybe more of scratch the surface and getting, you know, uh, paying tribute to a lot of these legends, there's plenty more that, uh, that, um, you know, we can, uh, do, uh, you know, even from a local, you know, 
more modern standpoint. For instance, uh, you know, Bob and Tony Gillig are coming out next year, and they're going to join Scott Denny, another local guy here, uh, and Tony Christian. They're all going to be out running in the, uh, you know, Scott Denny starting a 3.75 pound per cubic inch class next year, and, and you got uh, Tony Christian going to be driving for Scott Denny and be involved with him, and uh, Bob and Tony Gill are coming back. Uh, her, her, her rumors of other somewhat... Um, Notable uh, pro stock guys don't maybe even get back into the fray of things. So you know, there's a lot of a lot more uh, you know we can do for some people. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure when we hang up, I'll remember a few people I like to see cars come out. But uh, you know, I you know uh, there's a lot of good drivers out there. And maybe not even the world champion drivers. These drivers that were in there, they you know they're you know. Sure, you know, everyone knows who Bill Jenkins is, and Sox and Mark, and, you know, then there's, you know, Rear Morrison and Warren Johnson, and, uh, you know, um, then you have, uh, you know, you have Frank Iacone and uh, uh, Wally Booth. But then there's another tier of drivers that maybe aren't, uh, you know, Butch Leo with uh, Art Ludwig. Um, uh, behind the wheel, but then there's a, another group of drivers that maybe weren't so famous, but you know uh, the cars are out there, and, and uh, or there's pictures of cars out there, and, and they were maybe from your hometown. They were legends, so there's plenty of room. Uh, there's a lot of cars we like to see. I just like to see the fact that it, it's a growing class, and uh, you know, and you know, for people out there saying, "Well, I want to build a car, but maybe I don't want to." I want to represent uh, something my dad was trying to do. Come on in. I mean, uh, Perry Correct Car doesn't have to have a major legend name on it. Scott Hoffman with the Show Off Car, um, Show Off Car, I should say, is one of the most, uh, you know, fans' favorite cars out there. It's got a very, you know, probably about 20 pounds of uh, metal flake in it. It's a beautiful paint job. It's got those long burnouts. And, and uh, you know, he's not representing anybody, but you know, uh, kind of trying to do a period correct theme, and uh, cars a fan favorite. So, um, I'd like to see uh, in general more cars being built. I'm, I'm, that's a pretty cool thing. And getting up a few more legends, you know, that's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. Now, Mark, what are your favorite tracks to run on? Um, my favorite tracks to run on. Uh, you know, I love running at Joliet. It's it's a uh, you know it's a state of the art facility. Um, I, I uh, you know I, I like being at Byron. I think it's because it reminds me of my childhood. And you know when we go out the way from Saturday, I believe it's a night race, and it's not really a night racing track. So he's kind of like running lights out there and everything. And so from a driving standpoint, half track, you don't know if you're in a you know it you. You're in a night race or a street race, you know, or something. But it's a. I love racing at Byron. I, I love Joliet. Um, uh, you know, uh, I've only been there once, and I can't wait to go back. We were at a small track in Bedouin, Kentucky, and uh, a fun track to race at. The guy had the track prepped very nice, and the, and the people were very accommodating. Uh, Bowling Green's one of my favorite tracks. Um, you know, great facility. Um, you know, actually, I, I um, you know, what's not to like about Cordova? Um, you know, uh, I'm uh, I like being at the track. Well, I guess if I had to pinpoint my favorite, my favorite track probably is because it's you know a home track is probably Joliet or Byron. Now you guys don't run a, you guys don't run a Great Lakes at all. Huh? No, we do not run a Great Lakes. And, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know if you're waiting for me to respond on that, but that's really all I have to say on that. We do not run a Great Lakes. Okay. Do, do, you, have any, do you have any other hobbies outside of drag racing? Well, um, you know, I, I uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I still, I, went, I was a hockey player as a young adult. Um, it was my uh, first love. And, uh, you know, I still play, uh, 
try to, even my, as my group tells me my advanced stage, I still try to play a couple times a week. And, uh, you know, I uh, play tennis with my wife. I, I like to run. It's related. I like, uh, you know, pick up basketball. Um, and, uh, you know, anything uh, that, uh, uh, you know, my, my friends tease me that I don't think it's a hobby if I don't, if I don't have to wear a helmet. You know, but I don't necessarily if that's true, but, uh, you know, I'm a pretty, uh, competitive person by nature. I like playing, I love playing all sports, but, uh, my main thing is I was a hockey player. Yeah. And I still play, but I'll repeat that. I was a hockey player. I still play, but I was, at one time in my life, I was a hockey player. So maybe, so maybe if you weren't in a drag race, you would have been a, you would have been a pro hockey player. Um, I went as far as I could play. I, I was fortunate enough to play in the Pacific Coast League in California. And, um, you know, uh, my dad told me to uh, follow your dream. You could work any time. And uh, I, I think I went as far as I could go. So, I'm, you know, I happened to, uh, you know, be fortunate enough to be in some pretty competitive, um, I guess you would call it semi-pro hockey games, a lot of fun times. And, uh um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, you realize when you're at the top of your game, you know, what a combination of luck, skill, and desire it takes to get to that final level, and, uh, it makes me appreciate, you know, a, a professional, a professional athlete of any kind, um, even that much more, because, you know, it was something I strive to do, but just couldn't quite get there. And, um, um, you know, some people are blessed with just oodles of talent, but by and large, most of those guys, you know, have put in, you know, uh, extreme amount of work and sacrifice, so my hat's off to them. So, so now, what, what, what's Mark Pappas' favorite food? Um, How long is the show? <laughs> um, no, you know, I guess if I had, a, if I had to pick anything, I have a big seafood fan. I love uh, a good, you know, uh, and, and anything short of scallops. For some reason, I don't like scallops, but I love uh, shellfish. I love fish in general. Um, you know, I'm at, uh, you know, uh, when I used to travel on hockey, you know, we'd be in Boston or something. I used to just love, you know, some of the uh, San Francisco fishermen's wharf. I'm a big, big seafood guy. And, uh, there's, you know, seafood, uh, um, any kind of Asian cuisine, um, you know, I guess you'd be faster starting what I don't like. Um, you know, oddly enough, I'm not a sweet guy, though. I, uh, not too, you know, a couple of Dairy Queen blizzards and I'm good, but, uh, I'm more of a, uh, a, uh, Ethnic guy, I love ethnic foods. I love trying different ethnic foods, and uh, I, I actually like cooking. I guess you can list that as one of my hobbies as well. Okay, so what what's the fondest memory been for the, the Midwest Nostalgia Pro Stocks for you? Um, you know, <laughs> many, many, but I, I, I guess one of you know, I can't qualify this as the end of all the fond memories because I have many of them, but uh, we're in Bowling Green, uh, I believe, 2015. And uh, it, it's the, during the week at the Hot Rod Reunion between Thursday and Saturday. It's always on Father's Day weekend, so they're not, they don't race on Father's Day Sunday. So the height of the race is usually Saturday afternoon. And we're in the staging lanes, and, and uh, they're just... I mean, we were following junior fuel and top fuel. So we were kind of out of our cars at the starting line, kind of watching the top fuel cars run. And it was time the uh, they announced, you know, the, the starter kind of looked at us and said, okay, guys, let's start getting ready to get buckled up. And we were walking back to the cars, and uh, Steve Gibbs, um, the... Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry for his name, the former director of uh, Division Three, and uh, Jay Hollinger, and uh, Bob Fry 
were kind of standing, you know, by the by the uh, by the starting line, and, and we were making our way back to get in the car. Um, Jay Hollinger asked me, "Are you, are you running Teddy?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm running Teddy." And he goes, "Are you guys doing one of your famous burndowns?" And I thought he was like, you know, don't play around here, Mark. This is a big show. Don't you know? Don't waste our time. I'm like, oh no, sir, we'll go right in. And he goes, why is that? And I kind of looked at him funny, and then Bob Fry, the famous announcer, said, hey, Mark, if you guys do a burn down, I swear to God, I'll go up in a tower and I'll call it. And Teddy and I looked at each other and like, okay, I'm not going at first. And he's not going at first. And uh, we had a, uh, we had about a three minute burn down in front of about probably 20, 30, 20 some thousand fans at that point. And uh, it was pretty electrifying. It would have been a perfect story had I not uh, had, uh, um, did I red light? I, 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 you know, I, I think I might have, uh, I, I might have just, you know, basically, uh, no, I, I actually, I, I was, within red light, I was dead late. But there was a great drag race. And, and you know, the, the part I remember was Bob Fry look at me and say, Mark, if you guys do a burn down, I'll go up there and announce it. So, and uh, if there was one more, winning the first Grumpy Cup, uh, real quick, the Grumpy Cup is something that myself, Dominic Glasgow, and the uh, remaining members of uh, the Jenkins competition, which is now Black Arrow, with his uh, um, Brett Sheeling and uh, Jake Bar- Barbado, um, came up with the Grumpy Cup. And uh, the first annual was the first annual, the uh, inaugural held at Sykeston, and it was, uh, again, me and Ted Peters, the final, was an eight-mile track, and he cut an O2 light to my horrendous light, and uh, I passed him at the finish line. The margin of victory was three one-thousandths of a second, so uh, the bring home that first cup be cut was a pretty memorable thing as well. So I would say uh, there's plenty of them. But uh, those two come to mind right away. Thanks for sharing, Mark. Well, thank you. Now, Mark, I want to thank you for your time for an inter- interview. We want to run down the ne- coming, upcoming events for everyone again before we get out here. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will be at uh, Byron on the twelfth, Route sixty six on the nineteenth, and then the following weekend, which will be the twenty. Oh, let's see. Uh, 25th, I believe, 24th, 25th, 26th, we'll be at the Giant, Giant, back to Cordova World Series, IHRA World Series, that's a two-day event, Thursday, I mean, uh, we'll be there Thursday night, but we'll, the race is Friday and Saturday, and um, so we're off this weekend, the next three weeks are some of our biggest gigs, which is, um, uh, again, Byron, uh, Route 66, And then we will be on the um, uh, drag week. We will be we will be at Cordova and uh, Byron, and I guess we will be at Union Grove, but that's only through uh, the drag week people. Um, as of currently, right now, depending on their car count and time structure, they're going to have us on display, and uh, we've been told to have our you know cars ready to go. And I believe we're going to make one exhibition run at each of those three stops on drag week. That's coming up in September. Um, and uh, we have uh, a, um, you know, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but we're working on a thing, and if it comes through, it'll start in September and carry on the next year as an exhibition season. But there is a racing, uh, rel- relatively well-known racing organization out there that's thinking I'm putting this on uh is an exhibition class uh, for 2018, and then uh, come up with a real, you know, competition class for 2019. Um, but that's uh, something I think I hope to be able to announce in about a week. So we have a uh, big August coming up, and uh, a couple things in September, and um, we're we're gonna have some deals with uh, Kentucky and uh, our friends in the. Uh, North Carolina region to hook up and do something in October. So we uh, we're pretty we're coming into the, the kind of the of our of our schedule. Um, 
But uh, we probably still have, uh, you know, a couple of things that we'll announce for September coming up. But uh, we're really looking forward to our, our August with these three next big races. 